Hey everybody. What's up? It's what day is it? Uh, Tuesday. It's Tuesday. It's okay, Tuesday. that's right. It's Tuesday. Tuesday we're doing dolls. 1987, I think. 87. Right? Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. This is unusual because I had heard of this movie, but I don't remember. If I did see it, it was probably like a long time ago. Because um, it was one of those ones. It has a great cover, like in a great poster. Yeah. So it was one of those ones that you always saw in the video store. But I didn't realize until Shudder just added it a couple weeks ago. So I was like, oh, we got to get around to like watching that. I didn't realize that Stuart Gordon directed this shit. Yeah, I, I definitely... Of reanimator I, fame. I definitely used to see this at the video store, but I didn't get it because of that cover. Really? I looked at the, yeah, as it, at, you know, at, when I was younger, I was like, oh, that's going to suck. I don't, <laughs> don't want to see a movie about, I don't want to see a horror movie about dolls, you know. I wanted to see shit like aliens and shit like that, you know. Predator yeah, type stuff. I get you. So I was like, nah, I don't want to see something about dolls. But it's a good movie. It is, actually. Yeah, it's it's weird movie. because this was actually, even though it came out after From Beyond, it was actually shot before From Beyond. Yeah. Um, but then came out after because From Beyond came out in 86. Had I known it was the same director, I probably would have got it. But I, I wasn't paying attention to the director's names that much. Yeah. Maybe when I was a kid. I mean, I don't, like I said, I didn't even realize this was Stuart. I, I feel like somebody maybe told me that like a long time ago, but the, like I forgot about it. Yeah. But then when Shudder added it, I was kind of like, oh, maybe you should watch this because I couldn't remember if I'd ever seen it or not. Two of the, two of the characters in it are hot, proto, kind of goth, punk rock girls. Kind of like, uh, kind of like, Rose, Rose McDowell from fucking Strawberry Switchblade. They kind of look like that. Although the one blonde one actually yeah. just looks straight up like Madonna in the yeah. Lucky Star video. Yeah, and then the other one is actually the girl from the Take on Me. No, video. that's the same girl. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, the blonde girl is the girl from the Take right. on Me video. Right. Yeah. And Bunty she, Bailey. Yeah, she's dressed kind of like Madonna. But they got the exactly bows in their hair, like strawberry switchblade and stuff. They yeah, some polka and like dots. all the necklaces, necklaces and, the and polka dots lace and, shit. and that kind of shit. Yeah, they're, and they're mean. They're they're, <laughs> they're, they're mean, kind of criminal girls trying to steal shit. That's kind of like what. That's kind of like uh, goes along with all the '80s, like all the punk rockers and '80s movies yeah. were always kind of like they're always, heads. Yeah, they're always sheds. They're always criminals. Criminals, <laughs> which is uh, where we were always getting shit thrown at us. <laughs> you know, we were like the substitute, I, I guess. <laughs> They couldn't. They couldn't. They couldn't. If they couldn't show like black people or Hispanics and that, like it had to be a white person. Well, what kind of white person were we gonna use? Oh, those fucking terrible punk rockers. <laughs> With so their we were just silly an, hair. And yeah, their silly we were just makeup. like another racial stereotype. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking funny. But it was like, oh, because I can't really think yeah. of that many movies that came out in the '80s where the punks weren't the bad guys. No. I mean. Yeah, they were assholes. So they did that shit because it was safe. Because they were all fucking punk rockers and goths. They're making, working in Hollywood at that time. I'll just, I'll just wear my clothes. <laughs> Buy me that outfit, and I'll do that that role. <laughs> They're fucking assholes, you know. I they gotta make somebody look, look look like shit, and they're definitely not gonna make fucking just, you know, middle class Californian people look like shit. I guess not in that era. Yeah, they did because it, I kind yeah, of well, I yeah, so because like a lot did. of yuppies and frat boys and yeah. stuff like that. They were always yeah, they, like, they were villains and yeah. Thing. But I'm just yeah, it's like they weren't you, middle class though. Those were the upper class. Yeah, I kind of feel like they were villains more often than punk yeah. rockers. But if punk yeah. rockers were in a movie in the '80s, you could almost be assured yeah. that they were they were uh, they were bad substitute. Guys. Yeah, they were substitute for white trash. Yeah, I guess so. Even yeah. though most goths and stuff were yeah pretty, they middle, show the white trash as being fucking assholes too, and then rednecks. Well, like, you know, everybody's shown to be assholes yeah. in so did movies. It's like, I don't yeah. feel like, I don't know. I just feel like whenever you see punk rockers, they don't, yeah. they never really get it right. But, uh, but yeah, so that's kind of, okay. So this movie, <laughs> well, they never, they never do. No. Because it was just like, you know, we just wanted somebody that like looked like that in the movie. So yeah. it's like we had to make him a villain or whatever. So it's kind of like, so this movie, like I said, it's, I think that the mansion where they shot this movie that's actually, I don't think that's like a real mansion. I think they built that. Like it's built a set. And it's in Italy because I guess it was cheaper to film there in the 80s. And even though it's supposed to be England, I'm pretty sure, in the movie. Even though I'm pr I don't even know if they specify. But they shot it in Italy and that's the same set that they used for From Beyond. 
So, you know, that was economical. So it's like, well, we had to build this whole mansion set, but we got two movies out of it. So, you know, there you go. I think this only cost like $2 million to make only $2 million. I wish somebody would give me only $2 million. But, yeah. um, but you know, for a movie, that's like not very much. But this, so the thing about this is that even though, you know, it's Stuart Gordon, it came like right and he made it like right in the middle of like the reanimator from beyond one, two punch. But this one is kind of a lot different. It has like a similar tone to it. I feel like it's not as zany. This one is kind of more like it ha definitely has a lot of comedic elements. And it's almost I want to say it's almost kid friendly, except for a couple scenes in there that are kind of like probably you don't want a little kid watching it. But I feel like if a kid's like 10 or 11, it's probably fine. I don't even think a little kid nowadays would be fake. Well, probably not. But I'm just talking about back then. Yeah. Um, cause this is, cause there's a couple scenes in there, like with eyeballs popping out and stuff like that, but it's not like a big gore fest, like fucking it's not realistic was. either. And it's, yeah. So it's kind of yeah. like that type of thing, but it's, I feel like it has like a weird, like fairy tale. Oops, it's yeah. a fairy tale is essentially what it is. So you, uh, yeah. Pat Hatfield said Charles Band had a castle in Italy. That's probably why it was filmed there. Yeah. That's probably why this was, yeah, this was it's actually, a nice house. yeah, it was. Well, like I said that I'm pretty yeah. sure this, the set they shot this on was a set. I don't think it was a house, Okay. but, um, they might've shot, they might've shot castle freak at his castle though. Now that I'm thinking about it, hmm. but, uh, yeah, because Charles Band, this was prior to, cause didn't he have that thing later called like full moon pictures or whatever it was called that yeah, does like all chip. They did. I think they did like trancers. They did the puppet master movies. Trancers, yeah. I'm pretty sure they did trancers, <laughs> but so he was kind of known for doing these sort of low budget, yeah, sort of really. schlocky, like B movie type things. Some of which that's were like D movie. Some of which were trancers. good. Some of yeah. which were good, but some of which were, yeah. you know, it wasn't because actually I quite liked, uh, at least the first puppet master movie. I don't see any other, but, but this one actually has the same, has the same sort of premise as Puppet Master, kind of, um, but this predated Puppet Master. And also the guy that plays the old witch or the old warlock dude, the toy maker, Guy Rolf, is the same dude that played the toy maker guy in the Puppet Master movies later on. She's biting metal. Stop biting metal. She's like, why? Why not? Yeah, she... Why would you bite something metal? It's I ridiculous. do what I want. She just, I don't know. She's it's really crazy. into it. For a while, she was doing it, and I thought she was just like teething or something, no. like they say about babies. No, she just likes it. She, she likes to, to chew bite on things. Metal. She likes to chew it's on a metal, metal leg of a damn little. She likes to chew table. on metal, and she likes to chew on wood. Yeah, crazy. I, I got her some like little sticks and stuff to chew on, and she chews on those, but then she chews on. She's sitting there wagging her tail like a dog. Isn't that funny? No, yeah. it's not funny. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. But yeah, so basically what happens in this movie is that you have uh, this pair of parents. It's like a dad and a stepmom. And like the stepmom is the worst. She's like the evil stepmother in a fairy tale, right? Uh, fun fact, that's that was Stu Stuart Gordon's wife. Mm -hmm. Hillary, uh, not Hillary Mason. That wasn't her name. Um, I can't remember what her name was. But uh, Hillary Mason played the old lady in the movie. But um, yeah, so that was Stuart Gordon's wife just playing a bitch on wheels. Mm -hmm. And they have this little girl named Judy and they're on vacation. It's supposed to be, like I said, I think it's the English countryside, even though they shot it in Italy. So there's this horrible storm, the car gets stuck and they can't move it. And then they notice this mansion, like that's kind of off in the thing. So they're like, okay, well let's run over there and get out of the rain, uh, which was a very Rocky horror moment. I kind of got that. I even started singing There's a Light at the Frankenstein Place like when I was watching this movie. But yeah, so they go in there, they knock on the door and nobody answers. And so they just straight up like break into the fucking cellar as one does. Um, so then like this old guy comes down with a gun and is like, hey, what the fuck are you doing in my cellar? And they're like, oh, well, it was raining and nobody answered. So we just came, we just thought we'd bust in like, like you do. And, just um, breaking and entering. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, just entering. There's so there's yeah. so much breaking and entering. In this yes. Movie. But yeah, so but the old guy is like surprisingly chill with it. He's like, oh, okay, we just made some soup. Why don't you just come upstairs? And yeah, these storms are the worst, aren't they? Blah blah blah. So then it's like him, and it's this like old lady. I guess in England, just walking into somebody's house, there's not much risk of you getting blown away. Here, you'd get shot. Well, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. If I walk in, find somebody, get them through my fridge. I don't know you. You're not gonna make it out alive. Well, yeah, it's like because what are you why? Doing in my because why house? would you do? Yeah, that? You, you're too stupid to be left alive. <laughs> you might pass on yeah. your stupid genes. Yeah, yeah. Somebody wanted to mention too that uh, that guy Rolf. Yes, he was in Mister Sardonicus. Which, mm. which one of these days I want to do a 
retrospective on that movie too because I actually really dig that movie. But uh, yeah, he was in that when he was younger. But so so they have soup and everything. And then I forgot to mention there's this really great scene like while they're walking to the mansion where the stepmom what was her name Rosemary. I think her name was Rosemary. And just because she is a giant twant, she decides um, she takes away Judy's teddy bear for no reason. Um, and just like throws it into the forest like hey fuck you kid um so judy has this moment where she has kind of like a daydream where teddy gets really big and like turns into a monster and then like tears her stepmom's arms off and then like starts eating her dad and stuff and i guess they did that scene to like establish one to have kind of like some gory shit happening like right in the first few minutes of the movie but like <laughs> stop trying to dig through the damn books <laughs> And she looked at me and she's just, what? What? I'm not what? doing... I'm not Stop doing, trying I'm to just doing, doing my books. pookie activities. I yeah. do pookie activities. Yeah. Ridiculous. But yeah, so they're just trying to establish, you know, they want some gore from the outset, but they also want to establish that Judy is like really imaginative and her parents don't like that for some reason because they hate love and joy. Uh, and they also don't want kids, clearly. So I guess the dad has like married Rosemary because she's like a wealthy heiress who wears a towel on her head all the time. Like, I thought it was a dude, actually. Uh, no, that's no. Yeah. Like I said, that's Stuart Gordon's wife. She just okay. like she Sorry, was just made. <laughs> <laughs> that's Stuart Gordon is dead. <laughs> so, okay. Sorry, All Stu. Right. Yeah, I thought it was a dude. Well, she, you know, they did kind of like make her. They put like harsh makeup on her, I guess, yeah. so she would look more like a evil stepmother type uh, she just character. Had a very square jaw, square head. And well, she gone. can't help that. Yeah, okay. You can't like help what no, shape just... your fucking jaw is. That's your yeah. bones. <laughs> I'm still suspicious. You're still suspicious. Still very suspicious. I don't know. You'd, you'd have to ask her. Okay. But uh, but yeah, so there's that whole thing. So when the family like breaks into this these nice old people's uh, house, the old guy is basically like, oh, I'm a toy maker. And you don't, you know, what happened to, where's your doll? Don't you have a toy like to play with? And she doesn't, she doesn't narc on her stepmom because her stepmom's looking at her like, you better not tell him like that I threw your fucking teddy bear away because I'm the worst. She's like, uh, yeah, I just lost it, whatever. So the old guy gives her this little doll that looks, he's like, uh, you know, like Punch and Judy. He's he, little Mr. Punch, and he's like super, super creepy. So then, like, they're all sitting there eating, and then somebody else fucking breaks in. At this point, it's Ralph, who's kind of this, like, schlubby, kind of lovable, uh, you know, child at heart type of dude. And he's picked up these two punk rocker chicks uh, who are also assholes. Actually, I think that when he picked them up because it was raining, they were planning on robbing him. But now that they ended up at this house, they're like, oh, score. Now we're just going to rob this fucking mansion because I'm sure there's all these like, doesn't like the, the, the aha girl, doesn't she, um, she says antiques in a weird way. Like antiques. Antiques or yeah. an, an something. Yeah, what <laughs> She's was her like, name? What's her name again? Her real name was Bunty Bailey. Yeah, Bunty Bailey, name like Bunty. I do, I do, I do hand it to her though. She could act. Yeah. She can act, yeah. She acted, It was. It, she did a good job in the movie. She's cute, too, real cute. Yeah, She's, I'm pretty she, sure that's her name. Yeah, but I checked, that is that girl from the Take On Me video from AHA. It is, yeah. And, like, yeah. I watched another uh, review of this, too, and they also pointed that And out. she's much smaller than she looks in that video. She's tidy. She's maybe 4'10". 4'10", and maybe about 80 pounds. Would hmm. you say she was that small? I didn't remember her being particularly small. She was very small, very and, and very thin. Okay. She was yeah. Well, she was like really thin. Real I, I didn't thin. recognize. I didn't yeah. realize her being like. Look like a little bitty dancer or something. But yeah, so yeah, so they bust into this house too, just like oh hey, it was raining, so we just decided we were again gonna break into your house. So the old people are like super nice to them, and it's like mm -hmm. yeah, this is probably gonna storm all night, so you guys can just like chill here, and they like give they give them rooms and everything, but. What the people staying in the house don't know is that the toy maker, I guess essentially what they're doing is they're witches, right? But they're not, the old people aren't really bad guys though. You know what I mean? They're kind of bad guys, but this is kind of like a story. It's it, like I said, it's a fairy tale and it's like a morality story because Judy, the little girl and Ralph, who is the, the nice guy, you know, the kind of, oh, I'm a kid at heart and he's like really into all the toys and he thinks it's like really cool and everything. They end up like, okay, but everybody else who is a dick ends up, uh, you know, spoiler alert, all the dolls come to life and kill people. And what they're doing too is everybody that gets killed in the house 
to, it gets turned into a doll. Like they're cursed to get turned into a doll. It's a doll formation. <laughs> Start transforming. They transform into a doll. Which yeah. actually, I kind of like that one scene where the other punk rocker girl, um, not not the aha one. Yeah, the little brunette. The little brunette she one. She's cute too. She, um, at some point, like the dolls attack her and she like starts stepping on them and stuff. And then like when yeah. their faces, like when the ceramic breaks away from their faces, there's like little like gooey like skull skeleton type yeah. action in there, which like I thought was really cool. As of the, the special effects in this, the way the dolls move, which it was all puppets and stop motion. And for this being such a low budget movie, like the doll effects were actually really, really good, I thought. Everybody in this movie is familiar. You yeah. kind of recognize them from other movies and stuff, you know, in the United States and Europe. I recognized pretty much everybody. Even that other punk rock girl looked familiar, but I, I couldn't place her. I couldn't place any of them. I didn't really know any of their names. Just the dude, the overweight dude, and and Bunty. I recognized them. Yeah. But everybody else, everybody else is like real familiar. So this was an, kind of an all star cast, I guess, in a way. It just, I just couldn't really call the names. Yeah, because I you know, knew like I, I recognized them. That old, the lady that played the the old lady, yeah. like the the witch. She was in what the fuck was she in? She looked like something you'd see in some Hammer horror mo movies from. The no, 60s. she was in something in the eighties that that I remembered, like you know, looking You're like right. an older lady. But I can't remember and the dude, what I, it is. He looked real familiar too, but I, I couldn't. Well, he was him. in a fuck ton of stuff. Yeah, he was later because you know he's he was fairly like elderly in this one, but yeah. he was later in the he was in the Puppet Master movies, yeah. which like I said was the same production company. And then he was in somebody pointed out he was in Mr. Sardonicus like back in the yeah. 60s. That dude looked like that dude from that movie that we saw. Remember that movie that had that dude in it? Yeah, see, I feel like we say that kind of shit all the time. I feel like we kind of say, well, because I never know. Like, I d we watch the movie, and then sometimes I'll be like, hey, that's that motherfucker it's from like, whatever. Dude, dude, yeah, from, and yeah. then later, because yeah. usually before we record these, I'll at yeah. least do like some cursory research on yeah. it so I can figure out. But sometimes I forget, and then like sometimes you're like, hey, that hey. actor, and then like I don't have anything prepared like to know yeah. like who that is. But yeah. some of the people here were familiar. Now the you, you got a good memory though. Sometimes sometimes you you know who they are from other movies. You remember names real well. Well, sometimes, sometimes if know, sometimes if it's a know. movie that I've seen a bunch of times, yeah. um, I can place it. You know I'm what I mean? Have to put an end to this. You stop it. And particularly yeah. if it was something that happened in the eighties, like, and it was something that I saw a, a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you know the the other day when we were watching the Hatchet movies. And there was like a scene in there with Stephen Jeffries. I was like, "Hey, yeah. it's it's Evil Ed from Fright Night." And for whatever reason, I remembered what the actor's yeah. name was as well, uh, just probably because I've seen uh, because I've seen Fright Night so many times. Yeah. But yeah, so so I really like that in <laughs> what I saw that shit on the delay. Me fucking taking Poof Pookie off the stage. I was you go, you guys hitting her with the hat. She's like, "Oh no, no, I ain't going anywhere." No, fuck it. Well, she, like I said, she knows you're not gonna do anything she knows, bad. She knows I don't hurt her, so. <laughs> It's like she the, resists. She's she says, "Nah, fuck you. Nah, fuck you." I go. I mean, the worst that you ever do is if she's getting into real trouble, like yeah. he'll chuck a pillow at her or yeah. something like that. Yeah, she loses her shit if you throw a pillow. <laughs> she comes back though. You miss me. <laughs> <laughs> well, because any yeah. she likes any attention. Yep. Um, she that's, loves to wrestle. Yeah, and she yeah. really likes to wrestle. So if you're not yeah. paying any attention to her, then she will absolutely just like look Drive you right you in the crazy. face yeah. and just go over and go, "Oh, you don't want me to like knock over all your shit? I'm gonna yeah. knock over all your yeah. shit." Like, and then she'll look at you like really defiantly. She thinks she's a human child. She does, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Camp guy said dolls freak my wife out. She liked the Telly Savalas Twilight Zone. Oh, I remember that one. That was like with that creepy like. Uh... This is this, like I said, this is a similar kind of thing, but it's more like a fairy tale because. It's almost kind of like Hansel and Gretel type shit. And like I said, you have the evil stepmother thing. Uh, the dad sucks too. Um, he doesn't uh, He doesn't want the kid either. So they're just like putting up with this kid. It's like, fuck you kid and your fucking kid imagination. Like you you, you suck and all this other, uh, the other shit. And so when the little girl is like creeping around, she goes to get a glass of water or something. And she actually sees the aha girl getting dragged away by she doesn't know they're dolls at first she says she keeps saying little people like she thinks it's elves or something because she can like hear them like creeping around in the house so she so she sees part of it and then she goes and tells her dad and her dad's like man fuck off you don't know 
And, uh, you know, and he doesn't want to listen to her. So then she goes and tells Ralph, like the nice guy. And Ralph doesn't really believe her either. But then like he goes and there's she has like blood all over her slippers. And he's like, oh, maybe there's something to this. So he actually does end up like believing her and like helps her investigate. And then it comes there comes kind of a thing where her dad like accuses Ralph of killing the people because then at that point like the people start turning up dead and everything but like i said they're not i guess they're still getting killed but they're getting turned into dolls is what's happening and since the dolls were still alive because there's a great fucking scene at the end where the dad whose name is david um he fucks up the mr punch doll that the toy maker whose name is gabriel gave to the little girl and so gabriel's kind of like well i'm just going to turn you into the mr punch doll and then you know what I mean? So he's, so there's like a great transformation of him, like turning into this little with his like fucking silk pajamas on. Do you remember those fucking pajamas from the eighties? They were like, they were like bi color. It was kind of like split in the middle and then yeah. it was like gold and black. And then it was black and Tacky gold. As fuck. Yeah, they were. So he had like these, like, like some MC hammer would wear. <laughs> they did. It was the MC hammer pajamas. MC hammer pajamas. MC hammer jammies. MC hammer wear that shit on stage though. Crotch would be down to his fucking ankles. How could he stand that? I don't know. Big old fucking baggy on the top and real narrow at the bottom. Dancing and all that shit. I, cause I feel like the 80s, yeah, the 80s. Yeah, the 80s. Fucking nuts. Well, even, even like women's jeans and stuff like that in the yeah. 80s, they had like those big like butts or like the big yeah. wide hips and then like the peg legs. Peg legs. It looked, and it's look like ugly. it made everybody look like a fucking ice cream cone. Yeah, it's fucking terrible. I don't know. I don't think I ever they met like a single person. Then. Yeah, I don't think I ever met a single person that those were flattering no. on. I mean, it with just... The, with the pleats on the tops of the jeans and shit? Yeah. Like, why the fuck are you wearing this shit? Yeah, it made everybody look like pregnant or yeah. like they had a big, huge, fat ass and little tiny ankles. And they wore that shit like it was normal. Well, that's all you could get. Yeah. That's all you could get. That's like some shit your mom would tell you to wear. <laughs> Why aren't you wearing the pleats on the tops? <laughs> no, that's what was that was the style because yeah. remember, like guess what it was like. Fucking I guess ridiculous. it was like guest jeans. That was like yeah. kind of a big thing when I was in uh, junior weird. high and high school. <laughs> and it's like you didn't even think about it because that's yeah. what everyone was wearing. So it's like these just these big it like was bunched. For, it was forced on you by the system when you went to the fucking mall. That's where you shopped back in the days. Every fucking damn shop had nothing but those. It was forced on you like communism. It was like the it was like the, it was like Mao's little suit. <laughs> Capitalism said you can only buy this. <laughs> so now everybody has to go around looking like they have a big belly pooch yeah. and big wide hips. Yeah. And everybody has to go around looking like a fucking triangle. <laughs> Man, it was the worst. Yeah, I guess they didn't know any better, but I thought it looked fucking terrible. It did look fucking terrible. And yeah. it was well, and not only that, but a lot of them were fucking acid washed yeah. also, which looked even worse. And then you'd see characters that in movies that were kind of set more into like the 1930s and the shit looked a lot cooler. 20s and 30s like they looked normal. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like, look at Indiana Jones. A lot of shit he's wearing, it just looks normal. Which is weird. Yeah, yeah. you could wear stuff could wear from, now. like, the 30s, like, yeah. uh, just, like, regular clothes. Nobody and really nobody it. would probably right. bat an eye. It's just, I kind of feel like... 30s had badass jackets. Badass leather jackets, badass wool fucking coats and shit. They looked, they looked good. The, the weird thing about 30s is that they were still all wearing hats, though. Yeah. You but couldn't go anywhere I'll, without any kind of hat. I don't have a problem with that. Is some kind of fucking business hat or some kind of work hat. This it was is my hat. business hat. It was a hat. <laughs> yeah, that now fedora type fucking hats that fucking businessmen wore. You know. Yeah, and, I know. Yeah, some kind of some kind of fucking hat. You know, it was a hat culture. Yeah. Couldn't show your head. Well, yeah, it was just kind of like. Yeah. Well, it was just Hat on, hats on women, little round hats. And shit. I even feel like maybe this had started to phase out by that time, but I kind of feel like even my grandmother remembered, like yeah. if you were going out to town, like if you were going to the store or something like that, you had to wear gloves, gloves and a hat. And yeah. like women didn't wear pants ever. Yeah, weird. Like if you wore pants, that was yeah. like every pot people thought some shit about you. Yeah. Well, we even said that when we were talking about like Amelia Earhart and like, you know, Catherine Hepburn, I think when she was younger, yeah. um, you know, would wear pants and it was like this big fucking deal. You know what I mean? Which is hilarious yeah. nowadays, but back then it was like a big deal. Um, yeah, a lot of people don't know it, but back in the 20s and the 30s, you had girls fucking being wild and shit, wearing pants and then cutting their hair short. And smoking. And smoking. <gasps> it was seen as almost transgender back then. 
It was. Yeah. It was. It was a. It was a big deal. Big deal. Yeah. Just funny. Uh, yeah, Tammy said, don't forget the shoulder pads. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah. It's funny. We were watching, like, rewatching one of Dan Bell's videos. Ruffles and shit. One of Dan Bell's videos. And yeah. he really likes to find, like, these old infomercials, uh, infomercials and stuff like yeah. that and kind of edit them in, like, From with the... the 90s and 80s, yeah. With the footage. And the one that we were watching last night was that exact thing. There was one, it was, like, the Contempo rap, if you guys remember. It was this... It's basically like a headband thing, but it had like wire in it. Cause remember how everybody had those like poofy, kind of like the chick does in this movie, like like Madonna had, yeah. like that kind of poofy like headband kind of look. But you, it was one where you didn't have to like figure out complicated knots or anything. You could just like have because it had like I guess it was like floral wire inside. So you had the, like this big fluffy thing. So they had that, and then he had one with this it looked like a talk show or a daily news show or something like that where they were like saying and this woman has like a big bot like she's big on the bottom and small on the top and they're saying she had a fat ass she didn't though but and so it's like so let's put some shoulder pads in there we'll even it all out you know what i mean which i think was kind of that's what they were kind of trying to do with shoulder pads yeah. and i remember because i hated shoulder pads even back in the 80s it was like look i don't need any fucking shoulder pads all right and you couldn't buy anything with shoulder pads in there. And sometimes you'd buy a top and you're like, well, I can just cut the shoulder pads out. And then you'd get in there and they'd be like sewn into a thing where you couldn't cut them out without yeah. making holes in it. And it was just like, it was really depressing. I've been looking at fashion throughout the fucking eons. And to me, I still think late 90s, early 2000s looks the best. Mm. I think it did. I think the goth fashion looked the best, like the girls from fucking was it Ginger Snaps? Well, I mean, they were wearing. Yeah, I mean, goth fashion is just, alternative you know, fashion is yeah. a whole other thing because uh, you know. And I thought fucking girls with the fucking jinkos, those ridiculous jinkos, and the fucking little belly fucking shirts and shit, and fucking those girls, they thought that looked good. I thought the hair was starting to get reasonable. You know what I mean? Like we were talking about those girls in that movie. This is I like the hair. Remember? Yeah. You saw a lot of that. That went on to maybe 2004, I think, 2003. Yeah. Maybe. And it was just, there wasn't anything real extreme, and there was a wide variety of choices. That's why I liked it. Well, like I said, I kind of feel like that's what's happening nowadays. Right. In the same way that media has become more democratized and yeah. become more niche, I feel like there's not really any one big this is the mainstream fashion like there was in the 80s right. and early 90s. In the 90s, you had to be like this and that was it. Yeah, like yeah. the early 90s mainstream fashion, like that horrible fucking neon. Yeah. Gu Ugh. Terrible. That was like even worse than the 80s. But I kind of feel like you don't really have that anymore. You can kind of wear the whatever. Vanilla, the vanilla ice era. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny. Yeah, we were thinking about vanilla ice too because we've been rewatching. Uh, vanilla ice looked like a Gumby. <laughs> he did. Well. Looked like a white Gumby. Have, did you see what was that uh, Vanilla Ice movie? Cool as ice, oh, cold shit. as ice, cool as ice. Fucking that shit. We we saw we the riff saw tracks. The, the riff tracks. I'm not oh, watching it without that. Come God. on, I'm not sitting through that shit. That shit was That terrible. movie was just like I my I was like this the whole yeah. time from like the cringe worthiness. Yeah. Was just, I was like oh my God I'm gonna die from cringe. It was yeah. just like so like the shit he was wearing was just so fucking mm. obnoxious and like the way they were talking yeah. was obnoxious and I'm like this. I was like, this is why I hated the yeah. 90s right here. Like, there was some good shit in the 90s, too. Like, not everything was like that. But there was so much of that <laughs> that I was just kind of like, they're what ask, the fuck are they even they're thinking? They're asking if I have a vanilla ice wig. No, oh, I you should. Oh, That'd you be a good should wig. get one. Yeah. You should get one. Yeah. Fuck, that's Somebody was asking, is Tom balding? Dude, I'm fucking bald. We can tell about my bald. <laughs> and I am balding, man. I got all the fucking hair in the world. I got a big old pile of it right over there. I put it off for every kind of character I want, He's man. got a big pile of got hair. Got a big pile of fucking hair over there. Fuck this shit. Fuck these bitches. <laughs> fuck these bitches. Dreadlocks or no dreadlocks. I actually quite like dreadlocks. It depends on the person, though. Just kind of like... <laughs> Just kind of like any hair. Put my Elvis wig on. I mean, we have a <laughs> we have a friend named uh, named Shauna who has like really really cool dreadlocks, and she's had them like forever. She's like a hair. She you know did hair and stuff like that too. So I'm put my can, I'm gonna put my. That's what I was gonna say. I just kind of feel like for since my, we're kind of talking about dolls and we're talking about the '80s. Yeah. So dolls '80s Amadeus. I'm gonna put my authentic white boy wig on. There you go. My Caucasian fucking credentials <laughs> go up quite a bit. I'm ready to pass some laws up in this bitch. <laughs> I'm ready to pass some laws. That's right. Tom's wigging out. That's right. Yeah, so 
Okay, so I will say that this movie, I don't know if I'd go quite as far as to say it's like a lost classic or anything, but because it's like a lot different than Reanimator from Beyond. It has like the same tone, but it's almost, I almost want to say it's like a kid's horror movie. You know, in the same way that like Monster Squad or something like that is, where there's still like scary shit in it and there's still some gore in it, but you could let a kid watch it and they wouldn't be too traumatized. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what? And you're talking about Vanilla Ice. If we'd seen the Vanilla Ice skit with Jim Carrey. But I think I did, actually. That dude will never... I don't know what Vanilla Ice's real name was. I heard it one time. Fucking, but that I don't dude remember will, either. That dude will never live that shit down. Well, that's what you get for coming out of the gate with that bullshit that he of, had going yeah. on. He was a flash in the pan. He made a lot of money very quickly. I think they mostly made money off of him. I don't think he kept most of that because he's not rich. Yeah, and well, it did, it, doesn't he, isn't he working as a carpenter now? I isn't he a so. carpenter or something? Because yeah, something. I feel like he had a reality show for a while. kept trying to come back, make comebacks. Well, he was just... on like kind of, the, you know how the, for a long time, I don't know if they still have these because I don't really yeah. watch TV, but they had all those kind of like reality shows with like yeah. these has-been. Yeah. Like, let's put a bunch of has-been celebrities like in yeah. one house together, like the real world, except with washed up celebrities. Yeah. So like I feel him, like he might have been on one of those. Yeah. I mean, Robert Van Winkle. I mean, Robert Van Winkle, that's his name. That's his name? So like Rip Van Winkle, Damn. yeah. That's I, not his name. Right? I did change. I did no Robert Van Winkle. I said, oh, like Rip Van Winkle. <laughs> yeah. Who's I, who is Robert Van Winkle? Vanilla Ice. That's his real name. Yeah. You're not fucking with me. No. That sounds like a joke. Louis says Suge Knight took all his money. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Well, maybe he just took his money away from him because he's like, boy, we can't give you any money. Look at how you're fucking dressing. No, I, no, I, I think. I th <laughs> Yeah, I'm not gonna give you money. You're just gonna buy that bullshit with it. <laughs> I have a feeling that that was his job to be Vanilla Ice. They put him up to that, and that was all. That was a creation of a, some company. I don't think that that. Was yeah, his, it his did. Work. It definitely did seem to like let's hit all the like right. early '90s tropes all at fucking once. And, and I, I don't think that was his creation. I think he was kind of an actor, singer, performer. Vanilla Icington. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, Vanilla Ice. <laughs> Because that can that 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 did that in no way did he have a legitimate feel like he was a real person. That that was not that was not a real musician or a fucking rap star. That was an artificial construct. And yeah, yeah. and I feel like that becomes abundantly clear if you watch the that, movie. That movie it is abundantly like clear. Like don't watch it without the riff tracks because it's tracks, insufferable. Yeah, yeah. but no with, dude could be like that. I hope not. No, he was instructed to be that way, and that was a role he was playing. Good Lord. That could not have been, and it, and it feels like it wasn't his idea. It feels to me like some company put him up to do that, to make money. And I have a feeling that a lot of the black artists are like that, too, that they're more of an cre artificial creation to a certain extent. Well, I mean, if you want to make money, you have to like go yeah. down certain channels that, right. you know... I just think they think, well, let's do it with a white guy. Kind of like Elvis or something like that, you know? Let's bring it to the masses. That shit. <laughs> well, it, yeah. That's it worked for, a, what, a few months? He made uh, a lot well, of... no, I think it was longer than that. Well, because I, I thought about him. We were thinking about him last night because, like yeah. I said, we've been re-watching uh, The Toys That Made Us. And we were watching the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles episode. Mm -hmm. And remember, he did that the theme song for the first movie, I want to yeah. say. Go Ninja, go Ninja. Yeah. He did that. Rid ridiculous. He did that. Ridiculous. That was the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. See, I don't remember. I don't it like, just I'm goes not, to show you how Teenage damaging, Mutant. how damaging the old media was when it was totally corporate controlled. It was only a couple companies controlling television and radio. There was no way to get out from behind, from around it. I mean, it was like a cannon pointed at you. They shot into you whatever they invested in, and they made that product and shot it out of there. Like it was any, like it was Drano or Palm Olive or any of the other fucking products that they made, and you throw enough shit against the wall, it'll stick. If you repeat it enough times, people will, I guess, get addicted to it for a while. Either that, or they'll, or, or they'll blow their own head off to oh, get away from it. I think, <laughs> which I is, think, which is what camp I'm in. It just lets you just, <laughs> and I remember feeling that at the time. That anything that was popular was totally artificially generated. That there was nothing, nothing fucking organic, organic about it. Yeah, you know, like the way the Beatles were or something. That was kind of organic. 
No, no, totally, totally artificial. They make a bunch of money on it out of an artificial construct, and then when it stops, stops making money, they replace it with another product. Just like making those damn cartoons and toys and shit. It was that exact same fucking method. And he just got screwed because he got pigeonholed into Ice Ice Baby fucking mode. There was no way he could get out from around that. It destroyed his career. He couldn't do anything else after that. Yeah. Because he could probably be an okay actor or a singer, maybe, doing other things. But people, they put him well, up to that first and that was it. You're I mean, typecast. if you're like... Well, not necessarily because you you kind of have like people like um, you know Mark Wahlberg who yeah. was in was he in New Kids on the Block or was he in the other? See, I yeah. can't remember. There was a couple of Wahlbergs, but um, I think they own a burger franchise now, which is actually quite successful. But anyway, yeah, um, he was a little more organic though. But well, the thing about the whole New Kids on the Block and all that kind of shit was that that was maybe that was Donnie Wahlberg. So I feel like okay, so Mark Wahlberg was the brother of Donnie Wahlberg, who's in New Kids on the Block, but then Mark. Wahlberg had Marky Mark of the Funky Bunch. Yeah. So other like white boy rappers. Yeah. But he actually parlayed. So I guess he was like actually talented and he actually was able yeah. to, you know, go into acting and then he was actually became a quite successful actor. Yeah. Will Smith was like that. He was another artificial construct and so was uh, LL Cool J. That's, they're in that same thing. Yeah. They had a lot of corporate backing from very beginning. From the very beginning. But, but I, they were both talented and yeah. likable. For some reason... Vanilla Ice was not likable. He could not continue. Or he couldn't do other things. Or he couldn't do other Maybe things. Maybe he wasn't versatile. I think he could, because I think he was trying to do metal and shit, but you already fucked up your career because you're associated with, 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 with rap. You know. maybe well maybe if he hadn't made that movie maybe he could have got away with it a little bit maybe because yeah. that movie that like be. i said oh my god i couldn't believe i think mark Wahlberg fucking um actually was able to continue and get bigger because because he would do controversial roles and he would get in trouble for real yeah punch people out and shit which that adds to your street cred Mr. Roboto says, Jenny, were you a New Kids on the Block fan? Absolutely not. Uh, we hate well, all that shit. Honestly, I mean, by the time that came along, that was like, I was too old for that. Um, when, when I was a kid in the 80s, I was into Duran Duran. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? New Kids on the Block, that was like 90s. I was already at a high school by then. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that was like way too old for me. We are sidetracked like a motherfucker. Is, uh, uh, we're finished <laughs> with dolls, right? Yeah, I'm just okay. saying it's okay. a, if if you like Stuart Gordon and you haven't seen this one, don't be expecting the same thing as like Reanimator from Beyond because it's not like as wacky or gory or anything as that. But it's almost kind of like um, Grandmother's Hammer, I think, said something because I was saying it was more like a kid oriented sort of. And he said like the gate. I was like, yeah, it's the yeah. it's kind of like the gate, but it's it's almost kind of like a fairy tale ish. Yeah, it's a fairy tale story is essentially what it's it is. It's a decent movie. I much prefer From Beyond a Rian. Well, yeah, I do it, too. It, it's, it's a decent. But movie. I mean, and the acting in this is a little bit like some of the people are good and some of them are not so good. Um, but I will say, I think the strength of it. I really liked, like, the little girl character was cool. Like, the, the Ralph guy, like, the kind of lovable schlubby guy was cool. The um, the old couple was cool. And it was just kind of like, um, and the doll effects, I think, are the best, are, like, the highlight of the movie, I think. Because I think, like, all, because there's, like, a shit ton of different dolls. And, like, the way they do the puppets and the way they do transformation and the way they move around, like, the stop motion is actually really, really good for... A movie of this time and of this budget so like i said it's on shutter it might also be on tubi uh so you know if you don't have shutter but you should get shutter because shutter is awesome it's cheap and it's got good shit on it i yeah, yeah. i mean i only pay i think it's 56.99 for a year yeah. You know what I mean? And sometimes they give you like free t-shirts and shit too. If you, That's like five, if, five something a month. Though. It's like less than $5 but, a month, month yeah. if you pay yearly. Because yeah. I think if you pay month to month, I think it's four ninety nine or five ninety nine a month or something right. like that. So it's still like nothing. Um, and they always have good shit on there. Like I said, they have new shit and old shit and everything. Um, it's like, co yeah, comparable to Puppet Master. It's, yeah, it's about the same thing. I haven't seen the first Puppet Master in a long I know they made like 40 bajillion Puppet Master movies. I remember liking those as well. This one, it seems like a slightly different vibe, but it's kind of in the same ballpark. And I, what, when did Child's Play come out? Child's Play came out after this, right? I don't know. 88? I want to say the first Child's Play was 88. So it might have been like a year after this one. Because this was released in 87, but they actually made it, like I said, before they made... Uh, I don't remember Child's Play. I remember the name, but I don't remember you what know, the Chucky. movie is. You know, Chucky. 
Chucky. Okay, yeah, that's right. Chucky. Yeah, the one with Chucky. The one with Chucky. Yeah, no, I would probably put Child's Play above this. Well, yeah, Child's yeah, Play is a classic. That's a classic. Um, but this, you know, I'd put this one up there with maybe like House. Yeah. Similar to House. Which is the one that we're... We did the other day. Yeah, well, we yeah. recorded it. It'll be up. Right. It'll be up Friday or Thursday if you're a patron. You can see it. Uh, yeah, Mike Barrett says, this is my favorite doll horror film ahead of the Chucky films. Interesting. Yeah, yeah like, I, I kind of like... Like I said, I liked the the witchy, like, very taily kind of vibe that it had. And like I said, it had a little bit of a... At the beginning, it was almost kind of like... reminded me of Rocky Horror Picture Show a little bit. I don't know. I think kind of funny. The the one that had the dolls that was better than this was the one that uh, shit. What was the one? What was the name of that one that had the fucking dude who was using his psychic powers? Tourist trap. Tourist trap. Actually, somebody somebody brought that up earlier. They said they wondered if the poster had been done by the same person because the toaster looked kind of similar. I don't really know. I think I Tourist Trap is really good. I think I said toaster instead of poster. Yeah. Um, yeah, we did a review on that a while yeah. back. I actually, I wouldn't mind revisiting that. I, I love Tourist Trap. Tourist I kind Trap's of like... darker. More twisted. Yeah, yeah. Creepier. I think what happened with this one was that Charles Band, I think him or his designer, because like I said, he had that production company. It was kind of the thing where, you know, like you saw in the Ed Wood movie where it's kind of like, hey, I got a poster with a title and this is what the poster looks like. So make a movie about that. Yeah. Um, so I, a lot. I think that's what happened with this one. Like, it's like, look, we made this poster. It's called Dolls. It's like creepy like this. Now make a movie that goes along with this poster. So I think that might have been what happens uh, Should, with this situation. Just like those kids cartoons are actually made after they make the toys. They make the toys first. Well, like I said, if you if you have Netflix, watch the yeah. toys that made us because yeah. I, I know that. people like talk about like the 80s and, you know, they fondly remember like all the toys and stuff like, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and yeah. He-Man and everything. But, you know, you can complain all you want about, oh, corporate this and that and the other, but that's exactly what they were doing. The yeah. whole reason that they did the cartoons was to sell the toys. Sell the toys. I mean, they started out with the toys mm-hmm. and then they're like, well, the kids need a story or they yeah. won't buy these. So they, make they, a cartoon. They pull a toy out of the ass. And then they pull a story about the toy out of the ass. And then, <laughs> then they pull a fucking movie about the story out of the ass. It's all pulled out of the ass. But the, but the damn toy was made first. It didn't even have a name. And they were like, how do we make sense of all these? And they well, this one is that, and this one, and that, that's that's how that shit's done. Well, that's kind of like we were, were just trying to sell that damn toy. We were rewatching the Transformers ones, yeah. and those were essentially they just took a bunch of Japanese toys and renamed them, and yeah. renamed them, yeah. and like gave them backstories and stuff because they didn't yeah. really have that. Like on the Japanese market, they were just like transforming robots because mm-hmm. that was like a big trend in Japan at mm-hmm. the time. So it's just kind of like yeah, but we want like a whole story about these. So they give it to like this one poor dude in an office, and it's like hey, come up with twenty six names for these yeah. robots, and like give him a backstory and like how it all fits together yeah and he's usually some dude that they like he's not even a fucking really like an experienced writer they just know he's creative here make up no- names for all these and stories okay and well they he, like, yeah did it over the weekend yeah. yeah yeah he said he did it over the weekend he came up yeah. with like the main 26 like transformers yeah. it's just like that's like super funny that's just it's funny i mean yeah. but it's you know, that's just how that's how creative shit works yeah. you know it's like yeah it's cynical yeah, you know, everybody's just trying to make money. But in in a way, it's like, even though He-Man, I think, is probably like the main thing of that, because He-Man wasn't anything. And totally they, just, pulled out of they just had all these toys. and They're like, well, we need to come up with a new toy line. And then they're like, OK, well, no one's going to buy this if there isn't a cartoon. So then we have to make the cartoon. They have to like pay an animation studio to make it so we can sell more toys. That's what they're you know trying to do. But... Yeah. Like I said, you can say that's cynical, but the kids that bought the toys and played with them, I mean, they probably had a good time playing with the toys, and it's like yeah. a lot of people collect them and stuff, so, you know. What I think is funniest about the He-Man story, and I'm way off topic, we, we, me and you are way off topic, but I think one of the funniest things is that one of the reasons why He-Man was created is it was just an excuse. One of the excu- one of the reasons was is it, it was a way of selling a fucking lame-ass fucking tiger. They had a, yeah. a, a tiger. A cast tiger and they had to sell that <laughs> it was something they had made years before they just had it had it sitting around let's sell this thing yeah and they go oh well you know paint it green put stripes on it put a saddle on that thing you know? <laughs> just put him on the saddle that's weird when you think about it yeah that part of the contributing thing that caused he-man to be made and all those toys was to sell that fucking stupid ass tiger 
well, it was in the inventory. It worked. Yeah. So, you know. Yep. <laughs> Remember that yeah. tiger? It fucking didn't even move. It was just a solid fucking hollow tiger. But mm-hmm. it was just, it, it couldn't move. Yeah, my brother. It's like the one. worst fucking toy possible. I thought its legs moved, or at least back and forth. I don't think it did at all. I can't remember. Uh uh-uh. It's been a long time. Justin had one. Fucking Steve's little brother had it. And me and, me and Steve were looking at it. He goes, look at this shit. And fucking, we were amazed at the bullshit they would sell kids. <laughs> you know, we were teenagers at the time. Look at this amazing. Look at this fucking piece of shit. Yeah. Mr. Roboto says, what's with Charles Band and puppets? Yeah, I didn't realize because Charles Band, his production company... Not only did this movie uh, and the Puppet Master movies, but there was like a bunch of other ones too. Like was like Demonic Toys. Didn't he also do Demonic Toys, which was a similar kind of shit? So he's really, and I think there was like a handful more than that that I can't remember at the moment. So I kind of feel like his thing is he is really into little things, like little toys, little dolls, little things like that, attacking people. He's like super into that um vibe and it seems like most of the movies he wants to make or comes up with he's like i have an idea let's have this little bitty thing like you know a little doll or a little um teddy bear or something like that that kills people yeah the end (laughs) that's kind of like grandpa's goes justin his poor mom yeah his fucking mom he redrove his mom justin destroyed that whole fucking house that was the weirdest thing never seen a fucking Little kid destroy a goddamn house. Pulled all the fucking covered doors off the damn house, over, off the kitchen cabinets over time. Just fucking had just piles of fucking toys everywhere. Fucking, that kid was insane, man. I think I'd be returning he was just that insane. child. Insane. Yeah, he was here, insane. Here, here, take that one. What's back, funny guys. is that he eventually. Let me grew have up, another. I'm gonna he, exchange it. <laughs> he grew up. He grew up to be normal, but that that kid was just fucking a nut. Absolute insane. I knew some kids like that. Like I said, my my parents ran daycares off and on, um, and we had some kids like that, but most of them grew up okay. Yeah, Most of them grew up okay. He literally fucking reduced that house to just a worthless fucking house. (laughs) Can you imagine if you had a kid like that? Oh, my God. He scribbled on every fucking wall, put holes in the wall, and he was like eight, seven, eight, nine. Old enough to know Old enough enough to to bash holes in the wall. Fucking uh, tear everything out of the covers and just throw it on the ground and walk away from it. Just fucking kid was nuts, man. I never seen anything like it. Maybe he needed an exorcism. He's like he was, yeah. <laughs> Grandparents could explain it. He's been over that house. That fucking house. I, we had we had a kid. My mom babysat a kid that was kind of like that. Yeah. They, there's just some kids, little boys mostly. Yeah. Well, I've seen a, a, every now and then you see a little girl like that, but mostly it's little boys. Yeah. And they're just their whole thing. And a lot of it is not even malicious. They just like want to destroy yeah. shit. Grandpa said something. What did he say? I can't read it from here. I remember when she sent him to summer camp for juvenile delinquents. <laughs> yeah. Kid was, he ended can up you, okay, though, but man, me and, please me and... Please let him stop, like, trashing my house. I'd go over to see fucking Steve, and Steve would be sitting there, man. He'd just totally fucking just sick of the shit. He'd be fucking scowl on his face. He couldn't stand his little brother tearing everything up. He had to lock everything, and then he'd try to, to, to keep him out of it, but then he'd pull the panelings off the fucking walls and fucking slip in between so he could get in and out of a room and without having to fucking break the lock on the door. Yeah, that's, that's the kind of kid it was. He was, it was like living with a chimpanzee. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, he was fucking nuts. <laughs> Camp guy said she would let him stay past the pickup day. Yeah, just, yeah. just like forget to like pick yeah. him up from there. <laughs> Maybe someone else will take him. <laughs> His dad was like, "Fuck this." He he'll had... go. He'll go live yeah. in the wild, <laughs> like some of the feral children. Like His... that show we did a couple weeks. His ago. dad fucking said, "Fuck this," and ran off and fucking like immediately hooked up with like a twenty-two year old. <laughs> In yeah. that situation, though, you probably can't blame yeah, him. Yeah, I, I remember me, me and fucking Steve are sitting there. He shows up, fucking p- picking up the last of his shit, jumps in his fucking current convertible with his, with his new girlfriend, and waves goodbye, and he's with this 22, 23-year-old blonde. And me and fucking Steve are sitting there going, that motherfucker's living the life, man. He's fucking, see you, bro, see you. And he's like, yeah, you guys haven't given us <laughs> fucking takes off. Good luck with all that. Yeah, good luck with that shit. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah, Greg was young though. It's funny, you know, looking back on it, we saw him as an old man. Greg was probably like 30, 31, 32. Yeah. Well, you know. when you're a kid, everybody When you're a kid, everybody looks like old. old. He's like, fuck this. Yeah. yeah. Well, like I said, if if I was the mom, I probably would have left the kid there too and be yeah. like, yeah, I'm going to go live in another house. You uh, just he ran right time. over that mom. Jesus Christ. That's, yeah. See, this every day I'm just glad I yeah. have my children. <laughs> 
<laughs> Every time I hear a story like yeah. that, I'm like, whoo, dodged a bullet there. <laughs> That's funny. But, um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, all right. Are we are we done? We've been on yeah, this yeah, an hour. Yeah. I can't believe it. And we mostly mostly talked about the movie. Yeah. But, yeah, it's on Shutter. Check it out. They like got I free said, shit. They got free entertainment. They got, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's, look at your fucking hair. It's yeah. killing me. Yeah, I'm fucking being white. <laughs> <laughs> like on the money. What's that? I'm what? being like that dude off the fucking money. Like on the like money. off the fucking oatmeal fucking box. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I need. Yeah. Like that dude off the fucking oatmeal box. Sorry, I just had like I saw, I had a graphic yeah. design moment where I was just yeah. kind of like, oh, I could take a picture of you and then I could make like the Quaker oats. <laughs> I could make the Quaker oats yeah. box, but with you on it. Yeah. Oh my god, that'd be super funny. All right, so uh, it's Tuesday today, which means that tomorrow yeah. night at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is our sidetrack show. Like, this isn't a sidetrack show. But you know what I mean. Our all sidetrack show. Yeah. That's what we should probably start calling it. So, yeah, we do have booze, right? We don't yeah. have to go get any booze? No, we're good. Okay, we're, we still got we're some good. booze. We, yeah. have, we haven't drunk since Friday. Yeah. It's fine. I don't think. Try to lose some weight, man. I think I had shit. one on Saturday. Shit's got a lot of calories in it. It does, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, so uh, come on by tomorrow evening, afternoon, whatever you want to call it. And uh, we'll have some drinks and talk about some bullshit. I don't know. Yeah. Talk about toys some more. I don't know what we're going to be talking Doesn't about. Matter. We'll find out. But yeah, so thanks everybody for dropping by and have a good rest of your day and all that. We'll see you guys tomorrow.